So as people head home and the music dies down, the altar still stands. El Dia de los Muertos is over, but the food and candles remain as a way to call loved ones back home. For District Wire News, I'm Nikki DeMarco. The hallways at Capitol Books are literally crawling with choices. You can find just about anything hidden in these shelves. There's a book called Shampoo Planet, but next to that there's one called The Devil's Oasis. You could spend hours in here just looking through any imaginable topic, any imaginable genre, any imaginable author. It truly is one of DC's hidden treasures. According to the University of Chicago, 48% of youth who are infected with HIV don't actually know that they are infected. And today, many doctors will only offer testing to patients who fall into certain risk groups. Teachers are using Twitter to post assignments, start off their classes, and even talk to students outside of class. But some professors aren't catching on to the trend. During the question segment of the program, Tancredo expressed that he is not against diversity in America, but rather diversity as a definition for America. In response to that, student protesters raised their signs even higher and protested even louder, suggesting that peace between the two groups is still far from reach. For ATV News, this has been Nikki DeMarco. Politics and prose is the intersection of old and new. So if you're a modern reader who still likes the feel of book in their hands and still likes to buy books online, this is the bookstore for you. From Politics and Prose in Washington, D.C., I'm Nikki DeMarco, District Wire News. Today marks the 25th anniversary for National Adoption Day. All around the U.S., children are meeting their new families. In D.C., 31 children were adopted this weekend. Each newly adopted child was introduced in a public ceremony as a judge signed their adoption papers. The event is meant to recognize families that choose to adopt and raise awareness. More than 150 children in D.C. Lawmakers are working ar around restrictions on school lunches. Congress just voted to pass a bill that makes pizza a vegetable as long as two tablespoons of tomato paste are in it. Last month, the Senate blocked a bill from limiting French fries as a menu item to just twice a week. Some conservatives say the government should not be making decisions about what people eat. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us for this news break. I'm Nikki DeMarco. Have a good evening. Good evening. I'm Nikki DeMarco with this weekend's biggest stories from around the globe. 22 people are dead in protests in Egypt as police and army forces clash with protesters. The protesters are fighting against the military-led government. Police are using tear gas, forcing thousands of people to flee from the square. At least 1,700 people were injured over the weekend. Security forces are seen arresting and beating protesters, but the violence in the square seemed to calm down Sunday night. These clashes comes, come about two weeks before Egypt's first parliament elections since the ousting of Hosni Mubarak in February. The Libyan military says they captured Muammar Gaddafi's son Saturday. Saif al-Islam al-Gaddafi was the last fugitive son of Muammar Gaddafi and was considered to be his father's successor to the throne. He was taken hostage after a gun battle close to the Libyan-Niger border. He is now in the western city of Zaytan. Libyan celebrated... Li Thanks, Sarah. And you're right, it was absolutely gorgeous outside today, but it, the it's not exactly the same in the rest of the country. If we take a look here at the map, um, we can tell that in the West Coast, it's just not as warm as the East Coast, which doesn't seem like it'd be normal, but it is. We have temperatures anywhere from the 50s to the 40s in places like California and Nevada, but in the East Coast, we're staying really warm in the 60s and 70s. But if we look at what's going to start to happen um, as the week goes on, there's going to be a cold front that moves all the way up from Texas and into New York, but if we get lucky, it could um, slow down a bit and not reach DC, which looks like it might happen, it might weaken, but we'll keep our fingers crossed and hopefully we'll be able to keep up with this very nice weather we've been having. And today in DC, the high was 69 degrees and we had a 20% chance of precipitation, but we didn't see any of that. The sun, unfortunately, will set very early again tonight before 5 p.m. and that's only gonna get later and later, or I'm sorry, earlier and earlier as the winter goes on. And tomorrow, it's going to continue to be as nice. There might be a few showers in the afternoon, but we're still going to see a high of 56. 
um, precipitation 30%, and we'll see if that actually happens. And coming up in the five-day forecast, we have not as good weather as the week goes on. Wednesday, we'll probably see some rain and thunderstorms, but um, Thursday and Friday will be nicer. Back to you guys. His Holiness the Dalai Lama visited AU's Bender Arena yesterday, 11 years after his first visit in 1998. He was welcomed by local Buddhist monks from the D.C. and Virginia area, as well as a sold-out arena filled with students, faculty, and guests from all over the world. Entitled The Heart of Change, the entire day of events focused on tolerance, love, and progress. Indeed, I'm very happy having this opportunity to meet uh, people, uh, this time, uh, the main purpose is, uh, from my viewpoint, for promotion of religious harmony. Um, to me, the Dalai Lama is the embodiment of love and compassion. I mean, it's, I think it's a wonderful opportunity for us all to see His Holiness in person and um, you know, his speech today was very moving and it's about bringing, I think it, what really stood out is bringing people together and all the faith. I think some negative attitude towards religion. That also, not necessarily the religious teaching, but rather religious organization or religious institution. Through combining humor with his Buddhist enlightenment teachings, His Holiness the Dalai Lama created a certain modesty to what he had to say. His message was a constant one of change, that we as humans have the ability to evolve and recreate ourselves every day. And with such a diverse audience, his message hit right at home. Then another sort of the impermanence means momentarily changing. Uh, so the, the, this body and both mind and body is momentarily changing. That we know. Unless is it that momentarily changing there, the obvious changing cannot take place. So obvious change there. So obvious sort of change, the grosser level of change possible because of momentarily changing, more subtle way, always changing, always changing. I've actually been studying the Dalai Lama and Buddhism for a while. I'm a religions major. So this has been an extraordinary experience for me, getting to see him and listen to him. I was just amazed by how casual he was and just how very friendly he was with everyone who was there. There were other monks there on the stage and he invited them to chant and to speak, you know, during his own teaching. So I was just very touched by his humility, personally. What do you think? This yellow room in this quite fit? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> this is practical, something useful. In the afternoon, different forms of Tibetan culture were showcased through dance and musical expression. There was also a panel discussion on the Dalai Lama's message, as well as Buddhism as a whole. The group included distinguished professors, monks, and Buddhist experts. Popular discourse, you know, from a positive point of view, suggested that meditation has gone mainstream. But the real focus of the day was on His Holiness and the lightness of heart he brought to religion. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when, when I give some teaching, uh, then perhaps I think a bit long, and then this is sometimes people may feel sleep. Then this sniff is useful <laughs> to wake up their, their sleep. <laughs> Truly a monumental visit for American University and DC, the Dalai Lama's visit will forever be remembered as an example of tolerance and unity, two things the world often doesn't see. His visit will live on beyond this campus and beyond this city, though, and will also be remembered as a symbol of enlightenment. Reporting from Bender Arena, this is Nikki DeMarco for ATV News.
when you think of like Frisbee, it's just like a couple guys on the beach or like, you know, on the college campus just like throwing around doing ridiculous stuff. But it's a lot more like structured than I thought, which is like awesome because um, you wouldn't think it to be like a competitive sport, but it very much so, like it very, it very much so is. The majority of the reason why I go to practice is it's competitive, it's a good outlet, and it's like just, you know, it's straight up fun. Not to sound weird, but it's like a really pretty sport to watch just because you can see like the flight patterns of the discs. People who, who, who play Frisbee are so like enthusiastic about it, especially with the community within our own school. It's very, very like tightly knit. Um, my friend Max Lian, he's the captain of the team this year, he's a co-captain. He got me interested like freshman year and he joined the team um, freshman year and he had, uh, we had like three of our, like four really close friends who lived on our floor. And then he started just like throwing in the frisbee around, you know, like in the hall sometimes or like outside. And he was just like, you know man, like next year we're looking for more people to come out and so um, like us, like the three other guys are just like, yeah, that's actually a good idea, we might do it. It's the whole aspect of throwing like completely different than I thought going in. Cause you know, like people in like movies, they'll just do the backhand, but there's like so many other throws that you have to learn um, in order to be like competitive, like over the head. Um, and then there's a scuba and then crazy stuff. Like, I don't know how to do this, but people do like the chicken wing, which I don't even know how to like hold it, but you kind of like go like that and over. So there are like so many different ways to throw a frisbee. because we are like ultimate frisbee, you know, people think we're like a bunch of hippies or like, you know, like potheads or any, or stuff like that. But, but it is, it is different, um, I feel. I've never felt so tightly knit with a, with a sports community before, like my own team, but it, it's like we, we hang out, we eat together, we like go to class together. And it's just, it, it's so much more than a sport. It's like a lifestyle. And it's, I know that sounds so cliche, but it really is like, um, ultimate frisbee is more of a lifestyle than it is like a sport.